afternoon. My name is Jeff Spike. I'm Director of Marketing for Pratt Whitney. And I just want to give you an update on the gear turbo fan engine. The fact that we're on spec on time and on wing, flying in a whole bunch of airplanes these days. Well, as it is, uh, it's been a big year for us last year, and it's going to be a big year for us this year. Uh, the C-Series flying, the MRJ rollout, as you saw during the press conference, and of course, A320neo flight testing that's going on now. Uh, we've uh, sold over 6,400 engines, orders and commitments, and we have over 60 customers. That's uh, actually more engines than the V2500 has produced over time. So that's quite a volume of engines and, and quite a reception by the industry. And 16% uh, fuel consumption reductions, 50% reduction in emissions, 75% reduction in noise footprint, and a lot of reduction in airfoils and stages in our engine. So that's really what's driven the industry to accept the engine. And uh, we're actually showing all those commitments now in actual data on all the airplanes. So a lot coming up. We had a lot last year and a lot more coming up this year. Entry into service of the C-Series in 2016. 2015, at the end of this year, we'll be entering service with A320neos. The MRJ, of course, you saw during their presentation once again that uh, we have aircraft uh, with engines up there and they're running and doing ground runs. The MC-21 comes along a little bit later. That's a similar product as on the A320neo. And then the E-Jets, our first engine to test, will be going very shortly. And I'll show you some pictures of that engine that are coming together. So here's our customers. You can see we have a wide range of customers across all of our gear turbo fan platforms. We have five platforms here and uh, 6,400 orders, as I mentioned before, is just a great resounding um, support from the airline community. So our five platforms, the MRJ Regional Jet, C-Series, A320neo, Embraer, and the Aircoot MS-21. And then really the sixth platform that we have now is the Gulfstream GP, uh, GP500 and G600. Uh, that's business jets, but that has the core from the C-Series engine. So it's a pure power engine from a core standpoint. It doesn't have a gear in it, but uh, it shares a common core with the C-Series engines. And we've been testing, testing a lot over the past few years. We've accumulated over 32,000 engine cycles in our entire gear turbo fan test program. Uh, we've also uh, accumulated 17,000 hours of testing, over 4,000 flights, flight hours, and over 1,000 flights. And all of this took about 67 worth of engine builds as we came through the program. So we built over 60, 67 engines, and uh, that was uh, from builds and from certification testing to validation testing and compliance testing. So we invested quite a bit in this, and we're getting a lot of maturity out of these engines and learning as we move along. And then, of course, certification, um, geared turbofan. Uh, these are the real high bypass ratio engines. We are certified on, the, of course, the um, C-Series with the PW1500. We're certified uh, with the FAA on the PW1100G. Uh, dash JM, that's on the A320neos, and of course the PW800 recently uh, for the Gulfstream aircraft. So all of those have been certified with the authorities. And of course our engine is more than just a gear. Everyone's focusing on the gear all the time, but it's really more than a gear. We have a lot more uh, technologies in the engine, such as composite fan cases to reduce weight, hollow fan blades to drop the weight down, we have a high-speed, low-pressure spool, which is the low compressor and a low-pressure turbine that turns very fast and is very efficient, which allows us to take a lot of the stages out of the engine and reduce number of airfoils. So we can reduce number of airfoils by about 2,000, and we can reduce the stages up to about six or seven stages. So that really helps quite a bit in maintenance cost and in weight. So I'll just go through each of the programs for the regional jets. First will be the PW1500G on the C-Series. We're powering six flight test aircraft. As I mentioned, the engines are all certified through the authorities. The C-300 aircraft, of course, is in flight test. We have about 1,500 hours of flight time during the, the uh, compliance program up at uh, Bombardier. 
And most importantly, we're meeting all our commitments to Bavaria. That's important to us that we're on spec. And of course, now, as this aircraft begins to enter service next year, we're preparing our customers for entry into service. And that's the next step uh, as these uh, go into service. And this is really what it is. It's an 18-month gated process to entry into service. And we start with our customers 18 months before they're ready to receive the airplanes and go into revenue service. So we get our product ready, of course. And we get all the deliverables ready, which could be anything from tools to manuals to training. Uh, we get the MRO, which is the aftermarket ready. Again, tooling, test cells, shops, make sure they're all certified. And then uh, he asks readiness with the customer, make sure the customer is ready. So we have to make sure that the uh, field office reps are set up, make sure we have training in place, flight operations is in place, and they communicate with us, and uh, maintenance validation for all their maintenance systems. And of course, there's enough training there for the airline. And uh, one of the other things I don't think we mentioned there is uh, parts, making sure the airline has all parts for all their outstations or any stations where the airplane stops. So that's the initial provisioning portion of it. So it's an 18-month process. We've worked with a lot of airlines, and we'll continue to work with a lot of airlines. And as we look forward to the other aircraft coming online, we'll do the same process. The PW1200G program at the MRJ, of course, we're looking forward to the first flight this year of the airplane. We've delivered flight test engines to both of their flight test vehicles now. And uh, they've, uh, as they mentioned today in their press uh, briefing, that the ground running of both aircraft now. And that's really to check out the systems interaction between the engines, the aircraft, and all the subsystems of the airplane are checked out. And then from there, they'll go to taxiing, and then they'll go to first flight. So we're meeting schedule requirements for MRJ. I know they were moving around a year or so ago. We've uh, tackled all of those uh, requirements on time. And now we're preparing again, if you look forward, we'll start preparing customers now for entering the service on the MRJ. So as all these airplanes come online, we continue to get our customers ready. And this is just a look at some of the compliance power plants that were delivered to them at test, the teams that did it, and packed and ready to go to MRJ. So we have four propulsion systems at Mitsubishi now, plus uh, one spare, and some spare thrust reverser uh, assets there to support their program. PW1700 and 1900, those are the two engines that go on the 175s and the 190s respectively. Our first engine to test is being built in our Middletown facility in Connecticut. And uh, that engine will go to sea level testing. And then after that, it'll go on Pratt Whitney's flying test bed up in Maribel and we'll do the certification work. It's nice because the engine itself is basically a C-series engine. But what we have to certify now is all the externals, all the environmental control system differences, and uh, all of the cell differences. And we're beginning on our joint development phase now for the E-175, E-2, which uh, goes into service in uh, 2020, I think it is, 20, yeah, yeah. 2020. And uh, so we're beginning on that development phase and getting those engines ready. So mature products utilizing proven engine experience. They get a lot of experience from the C-Series and the MRJ program. And uh, we're going to start preparing customers for entry into service there because it's really not too far away. So here's a picture of the engine, the first 1900G engine down in Middletown, Connecticut. Looks like a bunch of wiring, but uh, the, bot the most bottom picture is the engine in its horizontal position. Upper left hand is where we're building the high compressor and high turbine in the vertical position. And the upper right hand picture is the gear itself. So that's a gear module that'll go in front of the horizontal engine there. So we're pretty good. We just need to bring the fan cases to it. And of course, you can see all the wiring. There'll probably be around 2,000 pieces of instrumentation in this test program as we go to, system, as we go to uh, certification. So we uh, want to get an idea what these aircraft would look like with high bypass ratio engines. And if you haven't seen them, it's pretty dramatic for the 12 bypass ratio engines we have as to what the aircraft, regional aircraft, looks like. So this is an Embraer jet. And if we were to put on the uh, 1900, that's kind of what the engine diameter would look like on the aircraft. 
So when you see one of those coming at you, that'll be the embryo. <laughs> and, uh, but if you look at the A320neos and you look at the MRJs and the C-series, the engines stick out quite a bit because of the large diameters and large bypass ratios. So even if we put it on the same distance off the ground, you can see it becomes, uh, the engines become quite dramatic. That's not my handy PowerPoints, by the way. I'm not that good. <laughs> So it's really the difference between the 12 bypass ratio and the current 5 bypass ratios of the CF-34s. And of course, we're always thinking about the future, and uh, that's um, what the geared turbofan will be the architecture going forward for most of Pratt Whitney's platforms. And you can see that uh, you know we've, uh, we've already demonstrated the fuel burn that we've had with our current geared architecture. We're always looking at additional technology insertion, things we learned during test programs, to make the engines a little bit better. And then uh, the next generation of geared turbofans, um, those are gonna be you know, probably higher bypass ratio, much lower fan pressure ratio engines, could be up to 15 to one, so uh, we're off doing the pre-technology work for that now, so we're ready when uh, the new aircraft are ready. So just in closing, uh, it's been 90 years for Pratt Whitney. We're celebrating our 90th anniversary. And you can see we've come quite a ways. If you think about where we started when, uh, with a Fred Rensselaer and Rensselaer Field behind the Pratt Whitney facility in East Hartford. In present days, with wide bodies and 8Ds and a bunch of other legacy engines, as people like to call them, but that's what I grew up on. Uh, and then the future, of course, the geared turbofan, which has really uh, reignited Pratt Whitney and brought us back into the market. I have a short video here, which I think you may like. Jet engines, you don't usually think about the people who make them, about the engineers who design to defy gravity, or the mechanics and technicians who literally build them by hand, test them, and maintain them 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. These are the people of Pratt and Whitney. When an adventurer set out to break a world record, when the world needed to battle an unimaginable evil, the people of Pratt and Whitney were there. When the commercial airline industry was ready for the jet age, the people of Pratt and Whitney provided the thrust. And when we needed to keep an eye on our enemy, the people of Pratt and Whitney blew us along the fringes of space. When we needed to maintain our air superiority, the people of Pratt and Whitney built an engine that could stand an aircraft on its tail. When our troops and supplies needed to be lifted to the battlefields of the Middle East, the people of Pratt and Whitney built an engine that could carry the load. When the world's largest airliner needed an engine powerful enough to carry it, of Pratt and Whitney built one. And when a new kind of threat required us to fly under the radar, the people of Pratt and Whitney built an engine unlike any before. And when a crisis of a different nature began to threaten our environment, the people of Pratt and Whitney told the world we could change everything. about major milestones in history, you don't usually think about the people who make jet engines. These are the dependable people of Pratt and Whitney. The people who build the engines that make history.